So good morning. Uh, here with uh, Glenn Isbell from uh, Bell at uh, NBAA with Vertical Flight Society. Glenn, thank you for uh, joining us today. It's great to have you. Glad to be here. So uh, sitting in front of the uh, Bell introduction into urban air mobility, the Nexus. So the Nexus is actually a hybrid system. So Glenn, when we look at the hybrid system, can you tell me a little bit more about how that system works and why that is different than what we're looking at in the all electric? Yes, yeah, a good. Um, so the hybrid systems are powered by a um, turbine turbine engine. In this case, it's a Safran system, uh, and that that is then run through a generator that then powers the electric motors and provides lift. Um, also helps with noise and very an on demand kind of propulsion. Uh, it allows us to get to distributed propulsion in an easier way, um, but it also allows it to scale where we think there's likely a family of vehicles, but there's hybrid electric and then electric. Um, that we would that we uh, have on our drawn boards and we're developing. And one of the key elements for the Bell team is the fact that you've actually assembled really quite the amazing team of other groups to come on board. Could you tell us some of the other groups that have uh, come on board to help Bell uh, create the Nexus? Yeah, so we've assembled a team of what we call capable believers. Uh, and most of them are all people that are in the aerospace industry or have been working in technology in some aspect of flight, but are forward leaning and, and want to do things in a different way and can do things in a way that are required in the ODM space. So EPS is our battery um, um, partner. They are uh, out of Utah. They're, uh, they're, they're the newcomer kind of in the business, but they have some great technology. Uh, Garmin, who's a kind of a, a standby for avionics displays. Talus for flight controls. Um, Moog for actuation and, and control systems, uh, and then, and so those are the ones that we believe. Again, it's a it's a good team, a great team of capable believers that are trying to push in in ways that we none of us have ever solved these kind of problems before. But we're experimenting uh, to try to understand how we can solve this on-demand mobility problem that our uh, challenge that has come up uh, across a lot of different places. And when we look at uh, the hybrid system, um, one of the things we look at is during takeoff and landing uh, in those phases of flight, are you planning on being a hybrid throughout those uh, phases of flight? Yeah, so um, our hybrid system is really powered by the turbine um, that goes directly to the motors. We have batteries on board. The batteries on board are more of a safety redundancy aspect. Um, so a lot of the power, and again, the electric motors, the elect it's just kind of depends on where you get your electricity from. Uh, we get it from, we can get it from both places, but plan A is from the turbine generator set. Interesting. Uh, and as far as like uh, some of the areas that we look at for performance, uh, what kind of uh, top speed do you expect this vehicle to actually achieve? Yeah, so we're looking at a, at a, at a range of about 140 miles and then uh, uh, top speed of about 140 knots when we're converted to cruise. That's very respectable. Um, and how many people total is um, going to be capable for passengers? Yeah, so we have a four plus one configuration. So four passengers plus a pilot. And as, as you develop the technology further on, uh, you can envision the pilot seat uh, in an autonomous vehicle being maybe the business class seat or your or your uh, an extra seat. So looking down the road uh, from Bell's perspective, uh, what do you see as probably one of your biggest hurdles to overcome to achieve your goals in the, say, the next five to 10 years? You know, that's a great question. I, I believe that the, you know, we look at, we're approaching this in really what we call four frameworks. We have the technology, which we think we understand a lot of that and we've made progress. There's some still some things to go. Uh, we have uh, the operational side of what the infrastructure is. How do you operate these vehicles and fleets over urban areas? There's also obviously the biggest, um, thing in that is the public acceptance and understanding all the intricacies we need to do that because there's not a lot of people doing that today at scale. Um, we have the manufacturing um, pillar that is looking at how do we make at volume air vehicles at a price point that are significantly different and better than what we have today. And then we have the certification um, framework and that is one which probably the most people are most worried about today right. is the speed of the FAA or regulatory agencies to adopt a, um, a different cert basis 
for these vehicles that are that are kind of hybrids. Uh, we fly on wing the majority of the time, but we take off vertically. Electrically powered aircraft are, are not strongly or aren't represented heavily in the regs. Everything is assumed that it's uh, turbine powered. So those there's a lot of those kind of things. And I think probably most of the anxiety of, of, the, of the industry in general, especially the EVTOL folks, are really around that certification um, questions. Ah, oh, interesting. Um, and also you serve double duty. You actually are uh, a member and Bell's a member of the Vertical Flight Society, you serve on the board. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about um, what position you're holding and uh, some of the things that you see the Vertical Flight Society helping in this area? Yes, absolutely. So I'm privileged to be the chairman of the board this year. Um, and you know, VFS is really, takes a great, uh, a unique place in the industry. It's not all about the, it's, it's about the technical competence and the deep understanding of the science behind vertical lift aircraft. Um, we, you know, we've been very active, the society's been very active in the traditional helicopter world and the tilt rotor world, um, and they've really taken a leading uh, approach to the eVTOL space, because there's just a lot of, there's a big need for interchange of ideas, specifically around safety, uh, and a lot of those kind of things. There's a lot of people that have great ideas and we want to make sure that as an industry or as a community um, that, that we can learn from each other specifically around passenger safety and those kind of things. So it's a really, a, I've, I've very much enjoyed uh, a deeper relationship with the VFS over the last three years as we looked at where do we take this society in this very dynamic time. Uh, you know, it's been, it was a very traditional business for a lot of years. Uh, but it's very dynamic now with over 200 new eVTOL concepts. Um, there's a lot of different companies out there and there's a lot of energy uh, in the space, which is great because it helps us with STEM uh, for the younger uh, engineers. It helps us kind of revitalize people that, have, that, that are, want to be challenged with new ideas and kind of creating a different frontier for us to uh, approach. Awesome, I appreciate that. So. Uh, if you're here at uh, NBAA, stop by the Innovation Center, uh, check out Bell Nexus, and uh, talk to our folks here at Bell about their latest and greatest. And thank you for tuning in to the Vertical Flight Society. We hope you have a great day. Rex Alexander for VFS.